deck has. Yeah. Like, it's not particularly good at defending itself, and um, it's threat light and soft to spot removal in some res in some instances, as opposed to Cobbler, where there was like actually no identifiable weakness the deck had. Yeah, it, it was just do everything. Total raw raw power was through the roof. Synergies were through the roof. Uh, it couldn't even really like like mulligan or get land screw or whatever because it played so many lands and tutors and stuff. But like, you couldn't even hope that it would mulligan to five and you'd be able to pick up one that way because if it had a Squadron Hawk or a, a uh, Stoneforge Mystic or a Jace, it was like, all right, I didn't really mulligan yeah, to... What, what mulligan? I mulligan to 23, basically. <laughs> you know? So, all right. So, uh, we got uh, Michael Hetrick back on camera. We saw him earlier, I believe, in round three. He's with... Uh, it's, it's called Nyapod, although it's basically green-white with a couple of blue cards and a, uh, a Zealous Conscripts. And on the right, we have a... Uh, a brew. A brew. We have a brew. We have Jason Ames. Uh, both these individuals are 4-0. Uh, he's playing Bug Control. And basically what that is, is his creature his creature package is three Thrag Tusk, three Snapcaster Mages. Um, he's got a bevy of spells. So three, three Think Twice, three Forbidden Alchemy, a Sever the Bloodline, a Tribute to Hunger, two Doomblade, two Tragic Slip, two Dismember, two Black Sun Zenith, one Life Finale. You know, yeah. creatures are dying. Right. Um... Unfortunately, Jason. unfortunately for him, uh, Hattrick has drawn his singleton uh, Thalia, which I can only assume is totally insane against this guy's deck. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, making everything cost an additional one in like his all spell deck outside of the three type, three Thrag Tusk and three Snapcaster Mages, it's pretty big pain. I mean, he definitely has ways to get around it. Like I said, two Tragic Slips, two Doom Blades, uh, two Dismembers. He, has, he certainly has ways to kill it, but it is going to stunt his growth uh, quite well. And... In addition to all of the spells that Jason has, he also has five Planeswalkers, two Tamiya the Moon Sage, two Garrick Relentless, and one Liliana on the Veil. So his deck attacks from multiple different angles. Yep. But right now, Hedrick is just straight on the beatdown plan. He's, uh, his, his Thalia is uh, prohibiting Ames' development. He landed a Blade Splice in the previous turn. And this, uh, in response to this three-mana thing twice, we're going to see a Restoration Angel Resolve. I thought you were really doing a number on this game. Yeah. Think Twice is already painful enough to cost it to, to pay it two. Right. When you have to pay three, that's rough. So there's a Zenith for one, yeah. which is quite awesome. It's That's actually not bad at all. Yep. That's not bad at all. I mean, he's still on a two-turn clock. Yeah, I mean, right now he's facing down six points of damage on the board right now, uh, even with the counters on the, on the creatures. So, I mean, this attack is going to put Jason down to four. And I think that Ames, Ames very likely has, like, no problem winning this game if not for Thalia, because like it prevented him, from, instead of think twice at the end of the second turn, he did nothing. Instead of being able to Zenith for one on the third turn, he had to cast think twice, and yeah. now we're here. Uh, very good draw there by Jason. I, I'm not sure if he had a Threat Tusk already, but we know that he has one now. He's gonna go up to nine, and Threat yeah. Tusk beats both of those Gullums as well because of the counters on them. And I mean, realistically, he wouldn't really care if the Threat Tusk died either. Right, So. and Hedrick's out of gas. His hand is Bird plus Cavern of Souls, it appears, so. That Thrag Tusk is devastating here. Basically, all we need to do is find a way to deal with the Restoration Angel, and we got, got this, like, kind of wrapped up. I mean, yeah, I mean it, he it, still I mean, has Birthing Pot, he has draws or whatever. Of but. course, of course. I mean, given the situation, if he does find an answer to that Restoration Angel, and his deck has a bevy of answers to a three toughness creature, um, and that's one of them, that's going to be a Garrick Relentless. Then Thrag Tusk is going to be able to hold down the fort, and then Jason's going to be able to get his card drawing online, he's going to be able to get his Planeswalkers online. And he's going to take care and of that, business. And that's, that's a totally insane. I mean, all these turns are insane, but <laughs> that one was another good one. So now Garrick is flipped. Thragtus is holding off the Golem. Uh, not even Birthing Pot is that good of a draw right now because he, he, the chain he has to start is so slow. Yeah, he has to start from the ones all the way up. And now with Garrick being flipped into the alternate form, he can very easily do something along the lines of, all right, attack with my Thragtus. You know, if you want to block it, you can sack it to, you know, search for another Thrag Tusk. He's just going to elect to make uh, one of the Death Touch Worms this turn. But, but I mean, that's just one of the options that he has available to him. Yeah. This is a pretty insane turnaround here. Yeah, you know, you, you, you pretty much thought, you know, if he could do something to get that value off the board or just something to, like, slow it down or stabilize yeah. a little bit, his deck can take over, like, really quickly. He's got a ton of removal. Thrag Tusk is a kind of card that turns around the game insanely fast. There's a Gavany Township, which is a very, very good, uh, allows him to at least, I mean, he can't exactly attack Garrick right now. He can at least pump his bird and, and get in for one. Or he can send everything and 
but sending everything doesn't get him anywhere because he can put Wolf in front of Golem and Thraktos in front of Pilgrim. Yeah. So I think he just sends his bird. Yeah, just knock it down for one. I don't think I don't think that attacking Jason straight up for one to put him at six uh, is very good. I believe he's actually higher. I think his life total is higher than that too. Who Hetrix? Ah, uh, Jason's. I think he should be higher than seven. No, because I think he went from he was at um, he was at four, and then played Thrive Test to nine. Okay, yeah, and then four, yeah, fourteen. Eight, yeah, nine, eight. Yeah, so yeah, four, twelve or fourteen ish range is much more correct. Just because twelve correct. Okay, two Thrive Tests basically. Yeah. So we're going to send both our Thraxons in. And leafing through his hand, I mean, we see uh, we see a Dark uh, dark Slick Shores, and we also see a Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster being able to target the Tragic Slip in his graveyard uh, with the Morbature happening as he's going to get a Beast here. And he also does have the flashback on Think, twi think Twice as an option. Yep. So I assume we're just making good. another... No, make another... Uh, or we're upgrading. Yeah, he's going to sacrifice this. Um, sacrifice the token. Likely going to go get the third Thrat Tusk of the match. Go up to 17. And then dare Hetrick to beat two 5-3s and a Beast. Plus Snapcaster and Tragic Slip still left over. Yes. But yeah, this is... A, yeah, just to, at the risk of repeating myself, this is a very impressive comeback here. Oh, I definitely agree with you. I mean, Hetrick could... With the with the exception of him not having birthing pot, he really couldn't have asked for a much better draw this game. Yeah, no, I mean the beatdowns, the one Thalia against a all spell, all spell control deck, deck yeah, like <laughs> no creatures in his deck at all, and, and you know five planeswalkers in his deck, and not having to you know if he had to you know let's say pod in the Thalia, it would have been too slow. You yeah. know, it needed to be on turn two. I mean, it, on, on Jason's side, it was pretty important that he did draw one of his two black Simpsons to get out of the situation, but you put the cards in your deck so that you can draw them. Right. So there's a Blade Splicer with five mana up so he can still use his Township. And what looks like... Does he, yeah, he does have five mana available. Okay. So I think that's going to do a decent enough job holding him off. I mean, we do know that he, has a, that he has a Snapcaster for Tragic Slip, so if he yeah. is to activate, he can kill the Blade Splicer. But let me see Snapcaster Mage here. Well, right doesn't now. he just respond with a township? Yes. Yeah, he needed to wait until the township got activated so he could, like, the golem wouldn't first strike. That's a little bit hasty to me. I mean, at this point, he still just has to attack, right? He just has to send everything and lose a Thrag Tusk. This is an attack for, yeah. He's got to get that beast in there too, right? I think that beast should be attacking. So now he's just going to block here, first strike, go down to five probably. I don't love that attack from Jason. I just don't like the sequencing of that turn at all. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the point where you're committed to attacking with your Thrag Toss, you should definitely be sending in your beast as well, right? Because, like, all it's just free damage. Yeah. Like, you're, th you're already losing a Thrag Toss. That's a guarantee. And then he can either chump block with the Blade Splicer, which is fine for you. Sure. Taking the first strike off the Golem. Right. Or he can just take the three and go down to two, and now... Your Snapcaster is representing a lethal attacker. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little hasty as we see. Okay, he's just going to township straight up right now. Yep. And it just says go. So I assume we're going to be thinking twice here. Draws in the beast within. It's a draw that doesn't affect too much, I don't think. He draws into Forbidden Forbidden Alchemy. Alchemy. Hmm. So he has four four three four three three. And five five first striker. So he's coming in with this. Alright, happily block. Um The thing about Jason's deck is that he does have like a lot of control tools, but he's also kind of threat light. Like he has, he has three Thraktos. He has three Snapcaster Mages. His Thraktos are all gone now. Um, we know he has Snapcaster in his hand, a Snapcaster in play, and then he has like two Tamios, which really isn't actually a win condition. 
two Garrick Relentless, one of which he's already used, and then one Liliana Veil, which is like kind of a win condition, but not really. So why not why not mana leak there? Like if he mana leaks, that means that he can't use his township. It's hard to imagine him you getting to get a better spot to leak when he has. Like if he's resolving Borderland Ranger, that's another mana. Well, and assuming that Cavern is naming human. Oh sure. Oh sorry. I, I sorry. I missed the Cavern. Sure. And if Cavern's not on if Cavern is not on human, then I would absolutely mana leak. I, yeah. I agree with you completely. One assumes the way that he tapped that it was set to human. Yeah. Players, and now he's going to activate Township boss. again right away. Yeah. I'm not... I think Ames' last two attacks were both... incorrect. They just did not... They just felt poor. And especially not... Because now, like, on the end step, as Hetrick looks like he's going to serve with this bird here for four. Maybe? Okay. Ten minutes remaining in registration. You know, he four, has all this mana. He has one, two, three, four, five. He has eight mana. So, I mean, would it really have hurt? It, it, I don't think it would have hurt at all to cast that Forbidden Alchemy on his main phase. Because he does have five mana Planeswalkers in his deck. So if yep. he would have drawn one, he could have cast one right away. As he draws in to dismember Tribute to Hunger in two lands. So he's going to take... The uh, I mean, now he has dismember Snapcaster, so we actually just might kill him. Where right, you get to nuke, you get to nuke his two biggest. You get to nuke the Pilgrim, you get to nuke the Blade Splicer. Um, you have a Snapcaster in play, he has two blockers for two of your three three tokens, and then oh. you get in for three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so the, the dismember should do it. We'll see if he pulls the trigger on it, but that should take care of it. Well, I don't know if the other card in his hand is a Snapcaster. You see Tamiyo there. He is leafing through pretty quickly, but I'm almost positive there is a Snapcaster mage there. And we're going to see Tamiyo come into play. Yeah, that's, that's a Snapcaster in this member. Yeah, I mean, he had enough life to do what he needed to do, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that he... He, uh, by our standards, the game should potentially be over right now. Now it's just getting to the point where I, I don't think, that, I don't still think that he's assessing like the game state correctly on what he needs to accomplish. I mean, it could also realistically just be a matter of being under the lights, under the camera too. Yeah. So with Tamiyo at to five, that sort of induces Hetrick to attack and then township and then in response you can dismember but i guess that's the argument for not dismembering on your own turn but it's almost 99 percent likely that hetrick uses the um township anyway so i probably would have rather just done it up front um because if hetrick drew another township he could township township to save his bird from dismember and now he's just letting this this one resolve as well Now he's going to get into Tamiyo. It's a curious play by Jason. I think it's just... Just poor, poor, poor looking at the game state. Because, I mean, now this bird isn't even going to die when it should be dead. So he's taking poor damage for, like, basically no reason. Hmm. So, you know, if you're Hetrick here, um, he's going to tap the blade splash token. If you're Hetrick here, I'm trying to think of, like, you know, what outs are going to get him back and, like, get him out of this situation. Like, Sun Titan seems like it's probably a really good draw. It's because it's Sun Titan in this board position. Birthing Pod, too. I mean, yeah, Birthing Pod does not seem poor. Zealous Conscripts is probably a lot of action. I mean, yeah, that's true as well. Metamorph's not bad. I mean, he's definitely got draws. But, hmm. So, Hedrick tanking here. Don't know what the mystery card is. Right. I I, I don't. Know. It's hard for me it's to believe there's something. <laughs> it's definitely a spell. All right. Deceiver Exar. Oh, 
untap his token. Interesting. So now we can send bird plus huge first striking token. I'm trying to see if Petra can go for the kill here. I mean, attempt to attempt to just shove in for lethal. And if it does anything. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. I mean, part of the problem is, like, I mean, I've been in this sort of position before, like, that Hedrickson now. It's like, your opponent's played so oddly that you can't even be sure, like, well, he obviously doesn't have X, Y, and Z because he would have done this, you know, that those sort of lines of Yeah, play, sure, like, sure. God knows what could be happening. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I don't know what he has now. Like, he just dismembered a, a bird that wouldn't die. You know, like, I don't know, I, I don't know what, what, yeah, what else guy, he could have in his hand. This range is unlimited. Yeah. He's gonna draw a card with Think Twice. And that's a Black Zenith. And we're gonna see Beast Within on the Township. So I assume this will uh, lead into untapped Zenith for a bunch. I mean... That's my best guess. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's not going to kill everything. It's, I mean, it's going to leave. It's going to leave Hetrick with a Gullum token. Yeah. How big? Is that minus one now or plus one? Um. It's a good question. Hopefully, we can find out from the spotter if it's minus one or plus one token. And then we're going to lock down the Gollum with uh, Tamio. Seven counters on Tamiya. I believe the ultimate on Tamiya is eight as well. I want to make sure because I don't want to get that wrong. So it looks like his hand at this point now is Mana Leak, Snapcaster, um, Land. Two Mana Leaks now? Yep. And he has Alchemy still in the graveyard. Yeah, the ultimate on Tamiyo is eight. My, it is a minus one counter. And we're going to see the second mana leak here. Yeah, we're going to see, yeah, two mana leaks. Okay, leaving him with just Snapcaster Mage. He's going to attack Tamiyo. Say go. Out of six. And again, the, the counter on Blaze Spicer is a minus one, minus one counter. So it is just a two, two. Or excuse me, on the Gullum token. This is going to be interesting to see what's going to happen now, because Jason had the tools to win, um, used them incorrectly, and so now we're going to see if he's able to dig himself back, you know, into this game. Like you said, he does have the alchemy in his graveyard. I believe he just forgot to Tamiyo, his uh, the opponent's golem. Just said get, just said go too fast. Okay. So Hetrick debating now if he wants to alpha. I mean, I guess the, I guess he's worried about um, Tamiyo's minus power is a potential argument for holding back. Yeah, then I mean it's very real. With six counters on it, minus two will draw, we'll draw him two cards. So I mean it's a very real thing. I think we we're just gonna see Snapcaster range. dismember, dismember or Doomblade. All right, Doomblade targeting the Abyssin's Pilgrim. It's going to clear everything up, and now it's just going to be Tamiyo on an empty board with Alchemy in the graveyard for Jason Ames. Not a bad spot to be in. Tamiyo going to target the Cavern of Souls. We see Liliana of the Veil. Forcing Hetrick to discard what looks to be a land. And we'll see an Elvish Visionary and see if Hetrick can feel his way out of this one. And that, um, and that um, red source is actually kind of an important draw because it means that um, uh, Zealous Conscripts is still a draw here. Yeah. Because the cavern was locking out as one red source. Not a draw now. Tamiyo Ultimate. Sure. Think twice. So now we can draw up like crazy. That's going to be a Garrick Relentless. Never actually seen Tamiyo go ultimate before. No, first time? Yeah, that's yeah, first, it's sweet. It's my first time. I've done it in limited, lost. 
but <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Seems pretty good once it gets going. I'm no expert on these things, but I. Is that a life finale? There's a life finale in his deck list. There's yeah. one. Phyrexian Metamorph. Copying what is likely to be an Elvish Visionary. Give me one more, Floor. <laughs> and a birthing Sure. Card. All right. All right. All right. All right. We got a little something. A little haymaker here. We got a little something. Think twice. Ship it back. Draw a card. It's a Black Zenith, I think. I, was that a Black Zenith you saw? I believe so. Okay. Life's finale is, is Wrath of God plus Jester's Cap. Wow, Jester's Cap. That is it, what? It is, it is exile you get to exile three cards. From the deck? Yes. Okay, I, yeah. I want to confirm that it is that it is any card and All right, not and it looks like Hedrick's conceding. Hedrick gives in. Finally. Got off to an insane start. Ames with an insane recovery. Ames kind of let him back in the game. Looked actually like Hedrick was actually going to win at a couple points there in the mid game. Yes. And then uh, got buried later. Uh, let's take a look at Jason Ames' sideboard. Uh, as I am also looking up Lice Finale. I, don't, I hate being incorrect about cards. It makes me upset. So uh, we're going in our sideboard games here. It looks like. Um, Actually, not a lot of action uh, from from Hetrick's side that he can bring in here. He can bring in, you know, possibly wants another Zealous Conscript because there's so many Planeswalkers and right, ton of like targets, that. ton of targets. Um, and maybe he wants Hero of Blade Hold, so he has a slightly more aggressive angle. Um, you know, maybe an Acidic Slime because his deck's pretty top heavy, but not really a ton to bring in. Okay, uh, on my end. Silverheart seems fine too because it's just like a big yeah yeah it's got sure. silver yeah. Uh, on on my end uh, again we have the we have two naturalizes and two negates, of course being reactive against birthing pod not ideal. Well, so I believe it's a little bit different than for this deck. Why I don't like the shatters in aggressive decks because even if you shatter someone's pod after it's been in play for a turn or two, the damage done is something that you often can't come back from. A control deck like this can actually like shatter a birthing pod and then. Black Zenith away all the damage that happened and then actually pull back into the game. Okay. So a deck like uh, Jason's, I'm much more amenable to trying to bring in naturalized effects against Birthing Pod than I am like when Zombies tries to do it or when like Red Green Beatdown tries to do it. Those kind of decks, I like it a lot less. Um, we're also going to find the, the fourth Rack Tusk in the sideboard. Um, two Phantasmal Images with plenty of targets. Yeah. So I, I would expect that to come in. Um, an additional sever, additional sever the Bloodline, uh, kind of iffy on that one. Uh, an additional Garrick Relentless with Jason on the draw and no way to accelerate into it. I don't love boarding an additional one of those. Uh, two Dissipates, I don't think that's where you want these. And then two Curse of Death Hold. And if looking at Hetrick's deck list, he has Birds, Land of War Elves, um, Elvish Visionary, Thalia, the front end of Blade Splicer, in addition to just making the guy smaller, it doesn't yeah, seem like it, a bad yeah. card. It's, it's also, yeah, it is just generally valuable in terms of protecting your planeswalkers. Yeah. Like, we saw it. You know, we saw that game where um, you got into a spot where, like, Black Zenith plus Thrag Tusk was able to hold off a bunch of 3 threes. The same sort of principles apply to Planeswalker as well. Sure. Um, and just for those of you guys who have not seen Life's Finale in a little while, like myself and Patrick, um, four Black Black, so six total. Sorcery, destroy all creatures, then search target upon its library for up to three creature cards and put them in his or her graveyard. Okay, so it's cap three dudes. Yes, okay. just three guys. And they're put in the graveyard, not and not exiled. So, okay. um, a little bit different tape on different take, excuse me, on Jester's Cap, but yes, more or less. Okay. So, I mean, if you're if you're on Jason's side of things, you know, against like a pod deck, I'm trying to think of just who would be more favored in this matchup. Well, um, I mean that that game was a pretty. I mean, Hedrick got off to a great start and. There were some operations errors in the mid game by Ames, and he was still able to get it done. So I presume that implies at least game one is, is fairly good. I mean, again, Hetrick was without Birthing Pod for basically the whole game. Yeah. So that distorts things because if he has Pod instead of a different threat card in those early turns, he probably wins the game very easily. Sure. Um, but that was still pretty impressive that that Ames attack was able to come back from that from that start. As we see a Bird of Paradise from Hetrick. Uh, aims with the Hinterland Harbor and passes back, and we are going to see Birthing Pod. 
This Hedrick, time he has birthing fun. Hedrick just ripped it. Pretty good oh, time. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not a bad time. Yeah. Uh, and he has no problem going to 18 to cast that, I'm sure. Yep. Once that card's in play, I assume the game gets substantially easier. So basically, it's putting aims under the gun to like kill every creature that gets played for the rest of the game, which is not an easy thing to do. He's just always going to be under the gun now. You know, yep. just everything, as we see a Gavany Township in Hetrick's hand as well, one of the more important cards in these drawn-out games. Um, yeah, everything that Hetrick does now, you know, you have to think about, like, let's say he puts a three-mana spell on the stack. All right, well, if he puts a three-mana spell like Borderline Ranger on the stack, that's going to turn into a four-mana creature. Yep. It can turn into Hero Blade. It can turn into Restoration Angel. Or maybe some four-drop that I'm not prepared to play against, like a Metamorph pop again. So every, every creature that Hetrick casts now is something you have to be prepared to play against and think about the ramifications of if it resolves. So I assume we're going to go and get a uh, Thalia here to start things off, unless he's, like, jammed on mana or action, in which case he wants a Visionary. Ooh. Okay. I mean, light on action or or, or light on lands, either way. Yeah. If he's sacking the bird for Visionary, that's a little... Uh, well, it can't be light telling. It can't be light on mana, right? If he's sacking... I would like to think so, yeah. I mean, and we know he has a Township in his hand, so... Uh, did he just draw the Thalia there? That looks to be the case. And he doesn't have additional values in his sideboard, correct? There aren't any looming in there for Hetrick? Nope. Okay. As we see Thalia put on the stack now. And Jason moves his dismember to the front, so he's probably okay with that Thalia resolving. Just pay the four life and the extra mana to yeah. take care of it. Putting Ames down to 16. So we had a tight game, but in far, as far as board position is concerned, Hetrick is ahead. You had to assume that there was at least, there had to have been at least some argument to consider just dismembering the bird. Sure, just so there's no just, just kill the chain right away. Yeah, yeah, just try to give yourself some breathing space to be able to draw your natural eyes or whatever. It's also possible like Patrick just stalls on lands and you can win that way too. Like, but I'm a little surprised he didn't just fire off his removal spell right away. Did we see an attack here for one? Uh, with the Elvish Visionary, putting Ames down to 16. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see an argument for, you know, just killing it off right away, as we're going to see him sacrifice this. Uh, likely a Blade Splicer, potentially a Borderland Ranger. Yeah. Also potentially a Deceiver Exarch to untap it to move up to four. And then what are we doing at four? Getting a Restoration Angel? Yeah, Restoration Angel with, like, no value. Back. Um... As this is on the stack, Jason does have the opportunity to respond to this. He's going to sacrifice this. I mean, he can get Angel, he can get Hero Blade Hold if he boarded them in, which he did. Yep. There's Hero. And we're going to see a Forbidden Alchemy. And of course, Hero Unchecked is, as we know, basically just, game over. Yeah, just, it's a lot of damage. Yep. And Jason is opting to get a Garrick Relentless off his Forbidden Alchemy. Interested to see what else is in his hand. Well, he took it over a Ponder, which is sort of, uh, it's pretty interesting, because Ponder, uh, unless he has an answer for Hero already. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would hope he does. Like, he can't just let this card resolve. That's a Curse of Death's Old that he just drew. There's a Garrick Relentless. That's not an answer, and that does not kill it. Okay. I would have taken the Ponder. <laughs> over to Hetrick we go. <laughs> <laughs> I would have rather had Ponder, I think. That's that's fair. That's fair. So now Hedrick, I guess, can debate whether or not he just wants to go, like, play a land. If he has a land, he can just go land, attack, and township. Or if he's going to, like, keep spinning on the pod. He also has a Thraktus in his hand as well, along sure. with the Birds of Paradise and what looks to be a Sun Titan, even though he can't cast Sun Titan right now. So, I mean, options are definitely plentiful, plentiful Excuse me, for Hedrick. You know, you can ponder into a removal spell or snapcaster, get your dismember back. We're going to see the two tokens come into play and then and then resolution of the battle cry trigger. So it's going to be your typical attack with seven by the man on a horse. Sacrifice spin this up. Birds. Probably going to get an image to copy the uh, to copy the hero blade hold. Sure. So you don't have to kill one. you got to kill two. Ponder mm -hmm. drawn for Jason. It's a little late for that. Oh, it's not time for that now? I mean, we're we're still cut. All right. All right, we'll move on to game three. So, as these gentlemen sideboard, 
one thing that I'll probably take those Garricks out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, they <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not saying they're probably fine, but not good, bud. I, uh, that was not that was not Garrick at his most powerful. I would agree with you. Yeah. Actual wood elemental. Anywho. Wood, wood elemental. Yeah. That, that, what, what is wood elemental? Green and three colorless, zero zero. Uh, coming to play, sacrifice any number of forests, and he's plus one plus one for each forest you sacrifice. Oh, okay. So that actually, was... just like you know, put it into play and then put it in the graveyard. Yeah, sure. So obviously, obviously, this is not Jason's finest moment at this point in time. One would presume. I yeah. think we we would agree with that. Um, Oddly enough, he, he he could still win this match. Oh, easily. He, he yeah, could yeah. still very easily win this match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no reason, you know, to go on tilt or, you know, he can just get it together, take a deep breath, and, and get things back in order to win this match. Like, yeah, he is playing at someone who's relatively good at magic, so, you know, there's the starstruck factor if you want to bring that into things. Being in front of a live audience can be nerve-wracking for some people. He's on the screen right now. He looks a little bit nervous. Yeah. But you can still win the game. You can still win the match and move on to being 5-0. and yeah, I mean, although, you know, the day that you're starstruck by, like, you know, dude who plays a lot of Magic online and wins a fair bit, is like, maybe, like, competitive endeavors just aren't... How dare you? <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. Maybe this is not for you. You're not you know starstruck I mean? sitting next to me? No, I've known you for too long, man. Okay. There, maybe there would have been a different time or whatever. Okay. It's funny how that stuff works is, like... You know, the, the people that you're initially starstruck by, you kind of always are even, like, as time goes on and, you know, you just know them as people and other people you're around are more accomplished. Like, I'm still so starstruck by Jamie Park randomly because Jamie Park was, like, the first guy that I was ever, like, wow, he's, like, awesome at magic and, like, he's cool or whatever. Sure. Um, as Hetrick is moving down to six, we'll see if Jason aims to keep his... But I was just like out at some He's bar at, at, at Atlanta a couple of years ago where it's just like hanging out with like Jamie, Brad, and, and Jamie and I are also just like pretty friendly at this point, just whatever. Sure. It's like Jamie, Brad, Nelson, Yuza, and like the a lot of the Channel Fireball crew, and I'm just, all these people who like, you know, significant, like more recent finishes than Jamie and like just kind of gener generally better career resumes. And I'm like, I can't believe that I'm hanging out with Jamie Park. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Me and, there he is. Just me and Brad and, and Jamie hanging out at the table. I'm like, Brad is so lucky to get to hang out with Jamie Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Current player of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you should be counting your one, stars, yeah, buddy. One, you know, winner of 53 consecutive Pro Tour badges or whatever. <laughs> yeah. the, whatever's going on, you know. All yeah. right, so it looks like Hedrick's keeping six. And starts with a bird. That's going to meet a tragic slip. All right, so we have a dark, uh, excuse me, a catacombs, drown catacombs. Yeah. We might be without a third land. That's what I'm thinking, too. I think we're kind of relying on Think Twice to get us there. Tragic Slip, number two, Drag Toss. I think we're sending the turn back. We're passing back. Not good. Patrick has lands, but he doesn't have much to do with them. Yep. Seek from Coast here. Deceiver Exarch on the upkeep. Tap his blue black land. Okay. Sure. Can potentially prevent him from flashing back his thing twice, which it does. Yep. And, and now we get to go beat downs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we get to go beat downs. The XR can. Boom. Yep. 19, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> we'll see what kind of follow up Patrick has. Just a Birds of Paradise. Probably going to meet a tragic slip again. Yep. Yep. Let's see if he has a green. No, but that's uh, that's okay. He's still making his land drops. Yeah, and, and he, uh, he has access to thing twice. He's so. gonna, yeah, yeah. He's not. I mean, obviously, and there's a birthing pod. So we'll, I'm curious to see if he's willing to run it into a potential mana leak here. It yeah, might me be. Too. I mean, his his hand doesn't have a lot else going on. If this doesn't resolve, I mean, it's I'm waiting on it isn't exactly ideal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, especially with thing twice looming in the graveyard, like you might just have to give it a go. Chase his mana. Yep, he's gonna take two, go to 18 to cast it. It's gonna resolve. Well, let's see what he does with it. I mean, if he, gets, if he only has Hero of Blade Hole to go get, it's not necessarily that bad. Like, he just can kill it. Yeah, he can move he on. Can very you know? easily kill it. He's gonna sacrifice this. 
the end, it, we, I mean, we know he has Snapcaster Mage in his hand. And he just sacrificed the creature to Birthing Pod. So Snapcaster on Tragic Slip with the Morbid trick with yeah, the Morbid, yeah. it's going to kill it. Whatever he opts to get. We see Hero Blade Ultra. Sure. Yeah, there's your Snapcaster Mage. There's yeah, your Tragic Slip. Okay. This is the issue with some of these pod lists. It's like they, their chains can actually are a little bit easier to break up than other lists I've seen in the past. Yeah. Where he's not getting hunt masters, where where it's like it's hard to trade one for one with the threats that he's getting. Like, all right, he's, he's out of the pod. Like that's all it took. Yeah. Just one kill spell and. You see a ponder for a think twice and evolving wilds in a hinterland harbor. I assume we got to be keeping these, right? I mean, he does. I mean, it's two it's more two lands. lands plus green source. Yeah, I mean, green source for Thrag Tuscan hand. As he opts to keep it, Hinterland Harbor is coming into play, passes the turn. Can't quite get a good look in Hetrick's hand, I, I, I believe. I mean, I, it's at least two lands, yeah, right? Yeah, I say, there's at least one land hiding there. Oh, there's it's an image. It's a phantasmal image. Imaging Snapcaster, not ideal. If, I mean, if he's patient, if he's patient, he'll be able to get a Thrag Tusk and then, you know, sacrifice it to Pod to go get a Sun Titan. So, I mean, if, if, he, if he shows patience here, he can get a lot with that image. Yeah. So I assume that uh, Jason is going to want to just want to straight up just cast Cursed Death Hole here. Cause it, okay, Tamiyo instead, that's also Tamiyo's seems actually fine. very, very good. Yeah, you can just shut down the pod. pod. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because the curse shuts down, um, like, a lot of the potential ways to start the engine up. Yeah. Um, but if he had uh, Tamiyo, this seems much more attractive. Just curse him next turn. That was Zealous Conscripts off the top. It's not bad. It is not bad. There's a lot that he can do with that yes. this turn. That he was a just, very good draw. He can either Jack Snapcaster and uh, kill Tamiyo, um, or he can try to wait until Tamiyo's capped at loyalty and Mize that way. I mean, he can also he can also play. He can also play Zealous Conscripts, untap his birthing pod. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's, a ton ton. there's a ton of lines up yeah. right here. This is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. And if he has the seventh land, he could even, he could even play it. He could even play it, image it, and then take two things yes. and then just do some, do some yeah. as he plays the, the seventh land. The risk, the risk there with that play is like, if he's, if he has Black Zenith, you're just done if, if you move in like this. Sure. Scripts. It's gonna be interesting to see what he does. Really, really interesting, actually. So he's gonna untap the pod. It looks like. He's got to attack first, right? Okay. So now image. He can untap. He can. He can untap his own land. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, he's gonna take the land. Okay, I like that. Now he's gonna kill. Now he's gonna kill Tamiyo. Yeah. And then he's gonna sacrifice the image to the pod. He's gonna sacrifice the image to the pod. Um, go get Sun Titan, most likely. Sun Titan, get back the image. Do it up. Do the ditty. Yep. Copying, presumably Sun Titan to get back. Yeah, so does he have a visionary there. in there? Um, there's a visionary. I also believe there's a mana dork down there as well. So I mean, a fantastic turn for Hattrick. Yeah. Unbelievably good turn. He's just gonna get a mana dork back. Sure. And, and mana, getting mana, ma getting the mana dork back is also pretty important because now he has a one to sacrifice to birthing pot if he needs to get another fantastic. Yeah, I mean, just start back up. Yeah, and just keep going that way. Getting it. Getting an image to copy a Sun Titan or or to copy a uh, excuse me Zell's Conscript. So there's so a we, lot that he can. We do. really need a Lice Finale here. Like Lice Finale would be insane right now for Jason Ames. Insane. It's like Wrath plus probably cut off a large part of your future pod action. Yes. We draw Woodland Cemetery. We know there's a Thrag Tusk hiding out in his hand. A Woodland Cemetery. Not really sure the other. We see a think twice. What we know, what we know, isn't there is life finale. Yeah. 
I mean, you basically had to find a way to both stay alive and cast as many of your cantrips as possible to give you as many shots to find your finale. Zealous Conscripts is a hell of a card. It's very powerful, yes. You know, that, that alone, it, it, like you said, his deck is basically green-white. Yeah. You know, and he's going out of his way to play one, I guess he has one main and the one in his sideboard. So he's going he's going out of his way to splash just for that card. Yeah. And Phantasmin. It's like he's going out of his way to splash for just obscenely powerful cards. The insane thing to pod four and then so much, like... So much stuff to be doing when you're, like, you can steal your opponent's stuff and pod with it. I mean, it's just a million Five things. Mana. Curse of Death Bolt. Okay. It gets rid of the bird, but it doesn't have too much of an impact on the game right now. I mean, it means that Snapcaster can block um, conscripts. Yeah, that's not terrible. I agree with that. Although, can he just um, two mana, Illish Visionary? He's going to give himself a card. Pretty insane now because he's suddenly playing, get to rebuy that. Yep. So two five five Sun Titans and a two two Zealous Conscripts versus the two one Snapcaster Mage. So he's got to have some number of ways to be able to win the game this turn, right? Like another Conscripts does it. To win the game this turn? Like he, can, he could Conscript Curse and kill him, right? I mean, I don't think there's any way for... I mean, the only way that he'd be oh, no, able to... no, it's up to 15. No, it's not, that's not lethal. Yeah, the only way that he'd No, no, that, that it would be 18. 6, 7, 6, 12, 15. It would be 18 if he can take the curse and move it to his side. But that's not something that's really easy to do just because he his ones can't sacrifice to get a broken yeah, pod right. now. So it has to be metamorph. It, mean, it, it means he'd have to draw metamorph or chain it from a 3. So we're going to draw a card. He's also going to get back to see Braxark this turn. Probably just going to tap that, uh, yeah, tap the Snapcaster okay. Mage. And this attack is going to be for 12 damage. Knocking aims to six. Still in this situation. Now, now he has that play open up to him where he can sacrifice the Seaver Axar to go get Phyrexian Metamorph to copy his Zealous Conscripts to take the curse. That's available right. to him now. Although now he's in a, now with like the curse, the curse having stuck, now he's actually in a, now he's at, we're at a point where like Black Zenith actually also gets him out of all of this, right? Yes, yeah. So he's drawing way more alive now than he was on the previous turn. As we see Hetrick sacrifice the Deceiver Exar to Birthing Pod. Um, searching through his fours, we're gonna find the Metamorph. to see what he gets with Metamorph this turn. Or excuse me, what he clones. He's gonna clone Sun Titan. Yep. Draw a card. Looks like his draw was Thrag Tusk. Looked like a land. Yeah, that was an island. And Dark Another. Sea Shores. We know he has a Thrax, so Thrax is going to pull him to 11. You just have to wonder if 11 is high enough. Flashback. Oh, land, it Can't looks like. Harbor. So Thrax is going to put him down to 11. And Hetrick should, this should be a wrap now. Yeah, he should be able to kill him this turn, right? Yep, he's going to be able to get back to Seaver Exar to tap the Thrax Tusk when he attacks with the Sun Titans and his Elves Conscript. Snapcaster's going to jump in front of one of those Sun Titans, but one is not going to be enough when he's at 11, so it's going to be an attack for... It'll be an attack for, um, for 12. 12 points of damage we'll get through. So it should be enough to kill Hetrick as long as he sees it, and as long as I'm looking at the board state correctly. All right, so... Sacrifice Phantasmal Image knows that he doesn't have anything to find. Search. Okay, sure. This will just take care of all the blockers. Yeah, he's just going to clone his XR twice here. Yep. That'll do it. Yep. Michael Hetrick moving on to 5-0. and oh, Yep. Defeating Jason Ames in his black, blue, green control deck. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, Ames' deck was definitely impressive. Um, I mean, there. I, I think the.